big question here is what sort of environmental protection agency are we talking about? What we know is that, that Nick Smith and the National Parties agreed in principle to set up such an agency that it would live alongside the Ministry for the Environment, probably. Um, but environmental protection agencies around the world come in all sorts, shapes and sizes. You know, so a, 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 a max, one which is, if you like, uh, takes a maximalist view of its role would actually take over the functions, or some of the functions currently run by regional councils. You know, so we would see a, a pulling back to the centre of a number of environmental planning policy setting functions. So that at one level, an EPA could really, you know, seriously undermine the roles of regional councils to the point where one would be asking, are these bodies then sustainable um, if you took away some of their major regional policy, environmental policy making functions? On the other point, uh, a, a minimalist environmental protection agency, it's a wee bit like another level of bureaucracy, um, won't necessarily undermine the role of regional councils, but certainly take away some of their autonomy. Uh, you see this a slightly greater centralisation across the board, um, but won't, won't in itself um, mean that regional councils are unsustainable. But at the same time, I think adds to that sense uh, in the sector that we need to be looking at ourselves and that overall the structure itself isn't sustainable. And so we've had right around the country, well, a number of areas of country, a push for unitaries. Um, and I think some of that's coming, you know, so that you're finding that regional, regional councils themselves right now are feeling really threatened. Um, they see the EPA pulling away some of their functions to the national level, um, and at the same time you've got territorials eating away from below and saying, actually, we think we can run this place as a unitary much better. So they're really, really feeling uh, in the middle um, and are trying to really uh, redefine, to think about their role and what it might be in the future, and they're very uncertain. Um, and so I think if we're looking about sustainability of the sector as a whole, or looking at how the sector itself can contribute to sustainability, there are some critical questions now on the table. One is, what is, uh, you know, are we, what is, what is the whole issue about regional government? Is it going to be regional environmental management, as we have seen? Will we see a weakening of that case? Will we see actually the growth of, of, of regions in some other form, or will it be actually a much more localist kind of um, end point? Uh, will it what change be bottom up or top down? Will we see the state driving change? I don't personally see that intentionally. I think uh, you know, right of centre governments have tended to like small government. They've liked small councils. They've always historically resisted amalgamations. So I personally tend to don't, do not see this as a being, I see Auckland as a, a relatively uh, one-off event. Um, on the other hand, they've said that if you know, councils go to them with proposals, you know, they would look at them favourably, um, whether, whether citizens agree, of course, is the other side of that question. Um, will the EPA absorb the regional councils or just simply act as another level of bureaucracy? Is the future, and this is probably where I have some warmth to this idea, should we in the future be looking at something which is more of a plurality of, of, of local and regional governance models? And moving away from 89, where we decided that the way we run the west coast of the South Island is exactly appropriate for running Auckland in our largest metropolitan urban area. And maybe we can actually go up to a degree that we don't actually have to have all parts of New Zealand. Um, the governance structured in exactly the same sort of way and we can be somewhat more flexible about how these things are happening. Already under the LGA 2002 mandate, which actually allowed voluntary shifting of functions, we're beginning to see that. You know, we're pretty excited in Wellington with the Wellington Regional Council taking on the economic development function from the territorials. That's the first use of the voluntary transfer of powers that were in the LTA, and we think that's been a really interesting kind of model. Uh, and of course, we've seen it in Taranaki, where you've got the Regional Council taking on facility management and, and that sort of thing. So, okay, well, thanks very much, Mike.